Hello, welcome to Awards Academy. I am Rachel and I'm the producer at Awards. And um, so what is Awards Academy? Awards Academy is a fountain of knowledge for designers and developers where you can see courses. We've got courses on art direction. We've got logo design. So head over there and find some uh, learning opportunity for yourself. Um, yeah, so you're watching live on YouTube, so give us a subscribe. And in that way, you can be notified of all of our new live sessions coming up. And um, yeah, so let's get to it. Let's meet today's jury. Hello, jury. Hey, Rachel. Hey, guys. Hi, hello. everybody. Hey, hello. So we are joined, as always, by Jonas Lemper, partner and creative director at Tyker Norton. Hi, everybody. Hi, Rachel. Hey, Raphael, Nicolo. Hi, community. I'm looking forward to today's session. So be, pre be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, we are very honored to be joined by Raphael Dante. He's design lead at Media Monks LA. Welcome, Raphael. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, super excited and happy to be here. Uh, it's going to be my first time, and I'm really, really, really excited. So, yeah. Thanks for uh, having me here. Awesome, our pleasure. And he had so much fun the first time he decided to come back. So we <laughs> have uh, we have again, Nicolo Miranda, creative director and interactive designer. Welcome back, Nicolo. Thanks guys, thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks so much. So excited, so stay tuned. <laughs> Awesome. So uh, I'm going to leave you to get on with the uh, website review and remember to put your questions in the chat and I'll join you at the end for the Q&A. So have a good one. Thank Perfect. You. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, Rachel. Thank you very much. Again, hi, everybody. Nicolo, Rafael, it's a pleasure uh, to uh, have today's review together with you. And we are looking at Life in Vogue Italy by Monogrid. Monogrid, a studio for digital interactive experiences for bold brands from Florence, if I'm right. I hope you guys are watching and uh, are helping us with answering a couple of questions uh, uh, when we are uh, exploring this really, really beautiful um, experience. Life in Vogue, as far as I know, it's kind of an interactive view into the actual office building of Vogue in uh, Milan, in Italy. And um, there's a lot of things to explore. Um, and uh, Raphael is going to share with us what we are going to talk about. So yeah, um, so again, hi everyone. Uh, so this uh, this is what we're gonna talk about. Um, this website, uh, first of all, it's amazing. It's, it looks really, really beautiful. Uh, there's a lot of art pieces. So um, first of all, it's a very immersive uh, ex experience, uh, not a regular uh, website, which is, uh, which is, I think it's a really, really cool uh, thing to talk about. Uh, we are also going to talk about opening animation, 3D spaces, a lot of 3D actually. Uh, this website is uh, super 3D heavy, but not uh, WebGL. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, you know, talk and discuss uh, about that. Uh, some 360 scenes. Um, also, the art direction that is super rich, uh, full of details, every scene, every floor, you, you, we're going to go through it, but every um, piece of the website, the website is super rich in details, which is amazing. Uh, same thing with uh, page transitions and also the elevator, which is the menu, which is super, <laughs> super interesting uh, uh, thing about this website. Perfect summary, Rafael. Thank you very much. Uh, the awards team also took a quick performance review. Nicolo, would you like to, to have an opinion about that? What do you think? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, uh, we are going to talk about uh, this beautiful piece of you know, a digital immersive experience uh, built by Monogrid. Um, we will inspect not so much, but we will understand how to, um, you know, they probably could be improved some things uh they how they managed managed like you know uh, all the videos you see that seems like webgl all the uh 360 views inside and we are talking about also about some you know performance things accessibility things but especially um you know something about the concept development that uh for this kind of site was so much important from my perspective so true so true but without further ado let's jump into the website and let's experience 
this do it. this beauty. So life in Vogue. Again, um, a little bit of context. Uh, what we are going to experience here um, is some kind of. Uh, and uh, as far as I know, the, the, the office in, in, in uh, Milan has an iconic interior design. And somehow um, um, they had the idea or somebody had the idea to, uh, yeah, let, these, let, let, let this interior design, these different floors, these different rooms of this office become to life in a completely different way together with the artists. Um, and um, with that, they uh, created a whole experience here, which we are going to to explore. It's kind of part of an event. So it was a couple of days when they released, I guess, uh, the single floors. So now we are going to experience the whole thing. Um, and let's jump into the actual intro. What a beauty, right? Raphael, what do you think yeah. about that? What's your first impression? Um, so yeah, uh, um, before we jump to into this scene, I would like to talk about a little bit the, the previous what we see uh, uh, before. I think uh, it's, a, it's a really nice way to start uh, the website because uh, mm -hmm. you don't really know what's what's coming next, and um, it, it makes total sense, right, it, to have this magazine um, cover. And then as soon as you click it, you realize, yeah, if you, if you want to go ahead, um, you just see this. Uh, you know the the magazine open opens and he then then you see this uh pop up uh book illustration style um which is actually it's done like in, in 3D um the way the way it animates in it's really really uh beautiful and surprising right um there is a little bit of sound and i think that's the only time you hear sounds on this website and i think it makes it makes total sense um uh, and then as soon as we get to this this uh, beautiful um, um, uh, 3D um, image, um, it's super um, uh, curious. It makes you feel like curious about it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you see this beauty, this, this, this building, and you know you want to know what is what's going around it. Um, what is what is up to this uh, scene? So I think it's a really really nice way to to begin the experience because it it sets up um uh the, the 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 whole thing and uh from that there's only one button so there's nothing else to do it's pretty straightforward um which i think it's great uh because you don't get lost uh i would love to um uh have the ability of rotate this uh yeah. this this guy a little bit because as soon as i we land on this page my brain just says okay rotate this thing because yeah. i want to see the sides i want to see the back but in fact it's like i would i would love if we could move just a little bit but i wouldn't rotate it because the back of this is not as interesting as the front so it is kind of smart the fact that you, you can't really uh rotate because you know we would see things from um an angle where maybe it's not that interesting you know right totally it's true. I mean, we are also kind of get used to these 3D objects you can explore and you can uh, zoom in and zoom out. And uh, it gives you a little bit of, of, of this impression that you actually can do something with it. Um, but uh, it's, it's not yet possible. Um, Nicola, what do you think about, about this, this, this kind of implementation, this kind of look and feel? What, what, do, you, what do you feel when you see that? Well, um, when I first see uh, Life in Vogue, uh, I say to myself, well, <laughs> Monogrid has managed like, to represent Piazza Cardona in Milan as like a pop-up children menu book um, in a Western style, because if you guys like you see very well this, it seems like the Grand Budapest Hotel by Wes Anderson. And <laughs> it's something incredible. It, uh, and it's the first thing I thought when I see the website. It makes you, the users feel like giants. Uh, you know, bending down to admire, uh, this, you know, this little universe of the Vogue at Quarter. Um, honestly, I can think of uh, any design agency who brings such an overwhelming control to its website. Life in Vogue for me uh, is a digital experience suspended between, you know, the reality and the fiction, mixed it up mm -hmm. to 3D. It's 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 incredible. Um, 
and you know, on the open end animation, Monogrid has certainly adopted a very smart, uh, for me, solution in terms of you know development point of view, uh, using a pre-rendered video because it seems like a WebGL stuff, and it's the same thing that Raphael mentioned before. Uh, because actually, uh, you know, when 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 this things comes out, you want like to drag and you know, and then and flip the book in some ways, and it's beautiful how you know to see how the various space between them are composed in a, you know, in a Wes Anderson style, like in Grand Budapest Hotel, as I mentioned before, um, they probably have to insert a timeout event hmm. um, inside you know, the video that stop the video exactly in the middle. So clicking through the call to action that is on the home page, um, basically what they did is start the second half of the video and something incredible ups in there because the ground became the wall uh, with an elevator entrance that recalls um, uh, at the end, like, you know, uh, yeah, the a retro article style that takes you to the menu uh, and you can discover, you know, the various words of the designer. Uh, watching this, it's like a dream for me. Uh, it's, a deeply, <laughs> it's a deeply immersion. And uh, if Monogrid uh, looking looking at us right now, uh, thank you very much because it's something that uh, you know emotion both you know all of us. Uh, surely yeah. it will be have been very interesting as uh, Raphael mentioned before, from a technical point of view, for sure to insert like a drug function. So you know you you have like you know uh, this kind of distortion. But again, it's a gr it's reasonable and it's a great idea because. Uh, with this preloader animation, you avoid to have like, you know, any, you know, uh, payload networks issues or maybe don't affect yeah. performances. So it's a great, it's a great method. It's a great approach uh, for me to do this. What do you think, guys? Yeah, well, one thing I was gonna say, like, it, the, um, if we had everything in in WebGL uh, to make this animation the way they made it. Mm. It would be a, a nightmare, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. In terms of performance, and it's it's super like time time consuming. So um, just having it like pre rendered, it's there, and it's only an intro, right? Because the website hasn't even started uh, at this point. So spending a lot of that much time on 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 that type of animation in in WebGL, um, I don't know how many hours would require from a um, developer. Um, and also uh, 3D artists in, in order to make everything like um, super um, performance, performance um, um, uh, special because I mean, just rendering all these textures, all the uh, all the the the, um, the models would take mm -hmm. a lot of time. So just you know having that as an pre-rendered animation, that's really smart. Yeah, and it's also from from point of accessibility and page speed and things. Uh, it's it's a clever way of implementing implementing it. And the funny thing is, is that we as designers and awards community and things like that, we are already kind of primed that this is actually a WebGL experience somehow. Uh, and and they made a very clever, easy but clever way to fool users. Uh, uh, and at the same time, let's say have uh, less production costs uh, in the sense of creating creating a hardcore hardcore implementation um, and and making it as you just mentioned very very hard to experience it in a full fleshed also non leggy way right correct yeah, totally totally I, I I would just I just miss a little bit of like ambient sound um, uh, not a big deal but uh, that's that's what I what I miss a little bit I mean just a little ambience uh, would be uh, Absolutely. Nice. I mean, it brings you also into like visually in a, in a complete world of Wes Anderson, as you just said. And then we have this beautiful Art Deco, Art Nouveau. I don't know. I'm not an architect, uh, but uh, style <laughs> of this of this uh, of this uh, building and this paper cut stuff, uh, diorama like experience. I mean, that's that's a really arty and clever way to also show what's possible with paper yeah i mean at the end they're a magazine and they're transitioning it uh, in a very very clever and, and interesting and funny way right yeah totally totally and also another smart thing they did is imported the video inside the vimeo server so in this way they you know they oh, yeah. you know good views on vimeo but at the same time 
um, th th it's good for performances. So yeah, it's another thing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah, write that down. I think, they, I think they hide the controls on, on actually, yeah, I think that. Dear community, write that down as one of a clever trick to implement uh, uh, visuals or videos. <laughs> but let's jump into the whole experience. Yeah, let's go inside the elevator. So we are basically entering now the building. And what do we see, Nicolo? Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, it's something I fell in love with. I, I think it's one of the best things on this side. They recreated an index menu with several gateways uh, through an article, you know, elevator buttons. It's like it's it's like the site is telling you, hey, you know, press here or press here on the gateway so you can like go through the designer world because somehow these artists brought something to you know the vogue and the world of the fashion especially in Italy and Monogrid wanted to represent from my perspective that with an index menu that is away from the usual it's bringing you know a little of creativity on top of that it's uh it's amazing and they use like it, it's the same thing of the video because they use uh the texture so uh, it, obviously it's not webgl it's like you know uh, a pre-rendered 2d assets in mm -hmm. JPEGs. And they actually, when you hover over the button, you see like the light, but the light is just the texture. Um, so basically, I think uh, they probably use like, uh, you know, two level of Z index on the HTML. And uh, they use like two texture, one of the black one with, you know, the, the off white. Totally. I mean, um, I think that's a very clever way to connect. Like you're seeing this paper cut, uh, this, this, this house, you're getting into the house and then you have this, uh, this elevator menu. What I'm a little bit missing is that we got introduced to this beautiful paper cut style. And now we are in a very dark, somehow almost, yeah, you know, like there are some, some horror games uh, which have kind of this feeling with this with this flickering light and stuff like that. So it gets you a little bit into a different look and feel, which is um, for me, for me personally, it was a little bit odd at the first point um, uh, because it feels completely different. And also it's kind of missing the introduction. So without having me said what's all about, you're still kind of in a situation where you're a little bit lost. Is this a website? Is this a game? What? What? Uh, where? Where should I click? The, uh, click? Click first and things like that. But I mean, these are these are details, um, and they get more and more clever or interconnected. Longer we um, browse and visit um, uh, sub sites and sub pages and things like that, where we get more and more explanation and um, and insights. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, I think maybe um, maybe on the previous uh, page, we could have some some like copy just giving giving a little bit of context uh, what you know what this what this is all about. Mm -hmm. But um, about this 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 menu page, I think from a creative point of view, I think that's really really uh, cool. Um, and from a usability uh, point of view, it's also really great because as soon as you get to this page you know what this 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 website is like uh about not not um uh conceptually but mm -hmm. you know where to go you get it right you see this menu you, you you're you're in the elevator you see all these pages you see oh okay cool awesome i have all these places to go um and this is the menu right and most of the times the menu is just a secondary yeah. page and in this case, it's actually uh, pretty much like a second landing page because mm -hmm. you first land on the, um, the the map and then you go in this page that you're always going to go back. Uh, we're going to go through the, web, the website and if you guys haven't seen it, it before, but uh, you guys will see that you go you go in a room and then you go back to the elevator. So makes the menu something really, really special, which is not really common, right? Sometimes the menu is just a, a link in a corner and then if you have to go if you want to see it, you you click and open but sometimes you don't even um uh, click it so i think it's really cool um also about the art direction i think um it makes total sense because it's a very classic uh mm. elevator you know not like a super modern american uh, elevator <laughs> more um more like a, an old elevator uh but at the same time you know beautiful and classic 
um, with the, the you know classic typography. Uh, you know the buttons; they they have this golden uh, ring around it, um, and and I think it, it it's really cool. I think I think what I what I really like from a creative point of view is that you go to this page and then you 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 get how the website works. Hmm. That's true. Totally. Cool. Yeah. Uh, one thing when when I landing the first time inside uh, this page, I see um, you know the top the top arrows uh, that is not working yeah. um, because probably they want to represent in some ways. You know they recreate you know the real elevator inside the UI element. Um, so honestly, I think that maybe you know could could make it workable that arrow. So when maybe you can you can press down or press up, maybe you have like an active state over the SQL. So in that way, you can, you know, see where are you and then you can click through and go inside the page. Maybe, you know, just one point. But it's something that I thought just, you know, the first the first time I landed yeah. on the page. I mean, I would yeah. also be very curious about what was the briefing, uh, like how many different <laughs> versions of the menu have been there? I mean, right. uh, probably explored a lot of things and decided that it's kind of a control center like you're really in this in this uh, in this um, elevator so maybe monogrid you can share a little bit of insights of uh, how many different iterations of this menu have been there uh, since it's such a crucial point and also an important yeah design tile or design introduction um, into the into the navigational concept yeah That's sure so true. <laughs> Oops, uh, that was too fast. Sorry for that. So I was so excited uh, to, to enter one of the first, uh, first, first floors. But uh, I, would suggest, I would suggest that we are entering the first floor as soon as we are getting back because the concept is that different artists, and here at this point, Vincent Dare, um, made his interpretation of the director's office. Yeah, um, and took some pieces, I guess, from the actual interior design into his interpretation. But uh, let's jump into it. What a cool transition, right, Nicolo? Yeah, it's so cool, so cool. It's great how they manage the lights that coming from the top, uh, you know, the look and feel, the, 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 you know, what you feel about it. Um, there is like a word, like, you know, a says that says, um, uh, content is king, but format is queen. And <laughs> here it's, it's, uh, it's, it's great. So the, the, like these words, it's, it's great. This sentence for this kind of ambient, you see the light and this light looking like the Pantheon in Rome, uh, that, you know, light up and make it shine all the ground, uh, you know, it's it's great, and they represent this arc like the Ionic Greek. Um, they have spotlight. You can you know search through. You can discover this 360 view inside. Uh, you have videos. You have everything. Again, another time they pay homage. Uh, you know to the designers that bring something to the world of fashion to the Vogue uh, world, um, and, and they represent this in a very cool way. Uh, because in terms of you know tech stuff, something of like this obviously it's not a game. Uh, we are talking about websites, and when we're talking about websites, we also need to consider you know all the hardware and all the machine we use. Hmm. And um, they did a great job because I think they 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 find the right balance, uh, you know, between visual things and performances. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it's great overall. It's great. What do you think, guys? What do you think, Rafa? Yeah, no, I, I, I really uh, love it. We're going to go through more uh, floors, um, but I, I, I think it's it's super um, cool because it's super un unexpected um, the way uh, you see the different uh, floors. Uh, this one specific, I, I'm an illustrator as well, and I really love the way they used uh, illustrations to make the textures. Um, yeah. Um, it's like it's really really cool. It's super classic, very like Italian, um, which makes total sense. And I think it, it, there's there's a really cool mix uh, in this case, in this one specifically, between the the two D um, uh, texture, but added to to the to the three D uh, space, and mixed with with all this 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 objects that um, 
like I said, makes you want to spend time on those pages, which I think it's super important from, um, um, uh, if you want to make a, a really compelling website, you want people to go in and then spend time on it, right? You don't want people like just to go in and, and leave and then um, don't really remember what they saw. So I think um, the time that you spend just looking at the details and then opening every every single thing you find because uh, it's really interesting. Uh, that there's there's information about the artist. There's more uh, stuff to explore. Um, I think the 3D is really really uh, well executed. Um, again, I miss a couple of uh, small animations. Uh, uh, overall, sometimes I feel like it's uh, a bit static. This this room specifically, I think it's not that uh, it doesn't really really need an animation. Maybe the light coming from the top could have some like uh, little animation. Maybe some like uh, fog or something. Not sure if that would be even um, possible. Hmm. But um, just a quick, just some some thoughts around it. Um, but yeah, man. Overall, it's it's it, it looks really cool. Re really really cool. Absolutely. I mean, Monograd uh, just wrote into the chat that the idea of really entering inside a building and move between floors was actually one of the first concepts we proposed to the client and we both loved it. So this is one of these uh, golden moments when the first idea uh, drops perfectly and, uh, and, and hits, hits, hits the, the head of the, I don't know how it's called in English, but it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good good situation and lucky situation to get to this point definitely um, I'm, so, I'm so jealous it's something that <laughs> I, I i thought like i don't know like one year ago but i never had the chance to do it so <laughs> yeah <laughs> but from technical implementation is this just one big picture or is it a combination of picture and and 3d objects um do you do you do you have some some insights about that because I mean, we don't have this video, this fake 3D video solution we had at the beginning, right? Um, so we have here a different imp implementation. Um, what, what, what are your experiences on that? How do, what, what do you think about the, the solution here? Um, for me, it's like a JPEG rapid mm -hmm. in a circle way. It's something like, you know, like I, th I probably, I don't know, it's, it's just an idea, but probably maybe they can design this maybe in Blender you know, 4D and then they export the bake, so they bake it. And then and then they export maybe the UV mapping, the normal mapping, and then they imported everything inside the web but mm -hmm. without FreeJS. Um, could be, could could be, could be an approach, could be a method, but there are, there are a lot of methods to do this, uh, but yeah. could be one. I don't know. I don't know if they, they exported the maps, uh, like separate because they don't i think it's probably everything it's baked in because um mm. you don't really see you don't really see the normal maps moving you don't you don't really see any changing any changes on on, on the background as as you move but i'm pretty sure they, they 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 exported uh from blender or from cinema 4d or yeah. whatever uh, in a way that you you just export it as as a 360 view um mm -hmm. but it's really cool i couldn't really find i couldn't find any like, <laughs> uh thing that was wrong or like like anything that, is, that wasn't like matching it's just perfect man monogrid 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 uh has proven for me in the recent three years that they can master 3d space incredibly majestically and they prove it no they prove it with with gucci garden also if i don't remember wrong uh they are very 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 good bravo yeah. You need to do this. Regarding this, this general look and feel, I mean, I mean, they collaborated somehow with the client, with the with the actual artists, um, then developers, designers. So I think that is a very, very uh, can be a very fruitful combination, but also sometimes a very, very painful uh, situation and painful mm -hmm. painful collaboration. I think that this this outcome shows that there was lots a lot of love and passion in it and when we when we when we see at this style this art deco art nouveau like like in general a completely different topic but i see more and more styles like this popping up um uh, like also this very majestic church like uh, uh, very strong lightning things i think also 
um, Tobias von Schneider uh, shared one of uh, shared a new project, an art project, which has a little bit of a similar style and similar look and feel. So maybe maybe this is kind of a start of of a new new trend, a new extreme, yeah, going away from this hardcore minimalism or super crazy poppy colors, but something more characterful and something which has um, uh, maybe more depth and more more room for interpretation. Uh, I mean, at least from my side, I see a couple of things popping up right now. So dear community, keep looking and uh, create uh, possibly uh, new styles and new uh, or build new products based on this style or based on this design language, uh, which can be very exciting as we can see here. Yeah, one thing one thing I would love to know uh, it was like how the um, uh, how the artist in this case Vis Vincent uh, Dare, um how was the process between them and Monogrid and Vogue like how how was like this how did how the, this collaboration was you know like um, he came up with um, the concept maybe some sketches and then yeah. I'm pretty sure Monogrid uh, took it in and then translated that in in 3d um it's a really uh it's a really uh, interesting uh process must must have been absolutely i mean i just clicked here on the on on the details um of this uh vincent um and where we also get a little bit of 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 background and, and information and i think i think it's a little bit it's a pity that this page is a little bit let's say under designing or underperforming in comparison to to the other entrance points yeah. because i think that when you read this stuff i mean this is really really fun thing yeah when when the director is saying or when the artist is saying for me the director's office is a mysterious and almost inaccessible place yeah, and you could actually make a whole story around it no? just not showing the uh, the the outcome but really bringing somebody into into the thoughts and also interconnected with pieces you can see so uh, beautiful that it's connected with the with the with the artist, but I think it's a it's a, it would be even even greater um, to have also more exciting um, information or uh, exciting uh, more exciting designed information here at this point. Yeah, one cool idea for this page, Monogrid guys. I know you guys probably had these ideas, so I, mean, I don't want, I don't want to like <laughs> create any trouble for you guys. Uh, but I would uh, think it would be cool uh, if we could have some audio from the artists uh, telling that story. Uh, I think that would be, uh, you know, a cool way to introduce yeah, yeah. some of that content um, in a different way rather than just having text. It would be cool to, to listen to Vincent saying, uh, you know, things about the process, things about how he how he came up with this visuals. True, true. A little thing which I saw here, which I really liked, is that at the beginning they're working all the time with the X as a closing button, and at one point when they introduce the user to, okay, top right is your X, then it's actually changing to this button again, so you have this elevator feeling plus, I mean, you look where you click normally, and there we have again this this V, this Vogue V. Uh, it's not exactly the same, but uh, I think it's introduced like it's like these micro branding experiences, which are pretty, pretty, pretty neat. And somebody is uh, very happy right now that we are mentioning that this because uh, uh, this person was was uh, thinking about it to create like exactly these little pleasures, um, and to 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 really um yeah help help the brand um shine right yeah totally um well in terms of user experience honestly the first time i see it um i thought okay it's like the next chapter it's like the next word because i say maybe okay i'm the fourth yeah i need to go in the on the fifth um uh, so honestly in terms of user experience this is cool but probably shutting down the accessibility because it's not so accessible, it's not so understandable for users the first time. Obviously, if you click yeah, on the click through and you go back, obviously you understand that, it, that it's the close button. But honestly, uh, I will put there maybe a, a just a close. Maybe inside the button, but maybe in, instead of, I don't know. Uh, what do you think, guys? Which is the, the meanings of the B there? Like, the, I think it's the Roman number four, five. 
Mm, that's a good point. It's yeah, not probably, weird. but it can listen it, to us. <laughs> it leads it leads back to the to the elevator. But what I see yeah. when you just mentioned it, like this mi micro usability things are really not that consistent. So when we look here back to the room, which is here on the left, underlined, but here we have also links. So why are these not underlined? And yeah, you you and and this whole site, the subpage opened up as an overlay. So you actually think that with the X at the top right, you're closing the overlay, but no, you need to click here back to room to actually get back to the room. Yeah. Um, and when, you, when you're opening uh, the site and clicking on the top right, you're actually going back to the elevator. If you go back for a moment, sorry. Um, you know, sure. Can you go back? Uh, because yeah, here for me, the things it's not so much clear. Um, so you have the back room that it's underlined, but you don't have the back button, you know, to go back. In terms of accessibility, usually you need to put, you know, the call to action and then the symbol. And then you have Instagram and website that it's not underlined. And if you over over it, it's not underlined. So yeah. the users uh, maybe could have some difficulties to understand which kind of links is it or not. And then you have that V that brings back to you inside the elevator. Uh, so yeah, in terms of user experience, probably the, the concept development phase was more focused on, uh, you know, the 3D stuff. Uh, but yeah, probably uh, this page could have a little bit of, you know, of um, an increasing in terms of UX. Hmm. I mean, in this context, when we look at these sub pages here, right? Uh, I think one of the most important things are the is the about page, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we have here kind of, uh, in German, you say Bleiwüste, which is called, uh, which is basically just a desert of text. Yeah. Um, okay. and, and I think that, that there's a lot of spice and heart in the text, uh, but it's really hard to, 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 it's, it's, it's dropping down the experience and that's kind of a, of a pity. What do you think, Raphael? Yeah, um, yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. Um, I think um, again, the, 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 the first chunk of text is like super big. Um, um, I don't, I, in my opinion, I don't really, uh, I don't, I, I wouldn't read this, this, this text because <laughs> for me, it feels like feels feels a lot. Um, I think, but at the same time, there's there's a lot of information that uh, they they need to put in this page, the, the credits and, and all the logos on the bot at the bottom. So it's a challenge for the designers, uh, no doubt. Um, at the same time, I, I, one thing I like about this, this, this page is, um, it's like, um, it's a time for you to breathe a little bit because all the pages are super, um, detail heavy and everything. And then those, uh, those pages are more like, okay, you take a break. Um, hmm. and then, enjoy the, the 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 content in a more like calm way um and i and, and there is a little bit of interaction in the back with the background as soon as you you scroll down the the the, the gradient changes a little bit um yeah yeah that's true that's true i i think they want they wanted to represent maybe a letter ad style with without you know mm -hmm. but it, yes i agree with you that it's uh in, th in terms of UX, it's uh, it's a lot, it's a lot to to read. So they for sure are not using like micro writing or UX writing. Yeah, but again, 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 let's let's be uh, honest here. Sometimes that's the client saying, "Okay, this yes. is the text I want. This, yeah. I want this full thing here. No matter what, just yeah. add this text here, and then yeah. you can fight back." But and considering say, and considering the client could be, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a I mean, magazine, right? They yeah, write things. It's a magazine, so yeah, they should know how to write, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, how to how to set typo? But um, I, I always like to be uh, very realistic uh, in 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 with the the situation. Uh, like um, we know that we we would love to do whatever we want with those websites, but. We always have to consider that on the other side, there's a client. Yes. There's someone that is paying a lot of money, and then they have to to they must do a couple of things. Yeah. So, yeah, sometimes it's a big challenge to like 
make things look good with um, whatever you have. It's true. That's true. That's very true. So this seven and a half is laughing at me all the time. It says to, it's, it's saying to me, click me, click me, click me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So let's jump into the inspirational garden to the top. Oh, now you see here what's happening with the with the lights, with the arrows at the top. Yeah, it's something that it's a, okay. You are going up. That tell you like you are going up. What a beautiful experience here. Yes, totally. I, I think this is the main word of uh, of Vogue um i i i think it's uh you know it's the key value of the world sites and again monogrid has proven um another time that they manage so well the 3d spaces um and their work for gucci garden again uh if i don't wrong uh, demonstrate that um the, the inspirational garden is like um i think it's real dimension um and i think we kept that Vogue, probably the vogue italia uh as represented you know uh, as imagined its space and monogrid probably uh did very well uh i think this is one of the best things on the site for sure it's one of probably one of the best words on the site and we we saw uh you see all this kind of interactive spot that you can click through you can discover things um we saw this interaction coming through uh, a lot in the last years and surely are essential for uh you know usability if you want to mix up 3d in in a 2d scenes um yeah it's 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 very great what do you think guys about this yeah i really love this uh this scene it's like super like surreal um it's uh, it, like again it's a it's a it's a scene where you you want to spend a lot of time you just want to rotate and then see all the single uh pieces of content you want to explore this world um again my brain just <laughs> think okay you need to uh, process if, if, yeah it's it's how really they, cool how they do i did do this how they yeah how yeah they I, I, they they said that the uh, the, the artist they sent um uh, um sketches and and um and um mood boards and everything so i think coming up with this was probably like a super like cool uh process uh, i i don't i don't see them like stressed out about making this uh this world maybe there was a little bit of stress but i'm pretty sure it was super fun uh process um again i think this animated would be amazing with some small animations like yeah um because this scene especially this one that we are outside um you kind of feel that okay maybe the light would be moving the trees would be moving yes the little little bugs the plants would like have having some some movement um or the sound the atmosphere right yes yes yes, but yes that's that too but nothing to hear yet. <laughs> Maybe in the future or next iteration uh, next year. Uh, yeah, there is a sound button over there, but actually it seems like a microphone. So the first time I click it, I say, okay, maybe Google Chrome right now says to me, I'll load the microphone. But actually it's um, it's a sound. Yeah, I think somebody is, I don't know if it's the artist or, or somebody else, but somebody, you can't hear it yet, but somebody is talking about I guess a little bit of the background and what's happening here. And I mean, there's happening a lot. I mean, we have here some uh, iconic design pieces and, and, and furniture and, and things like that placed in this, in this, in this, in this uh, crazy, crazy, uh, crazy SED world. <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you can, you can just um, jump into those things and really learn more about the background and the product and if i'm not completely uh, wrong or maybe i'm wrong i don't know but this is this is this is how the office of vogue looks like and they actually brought pieces from the physical office into a digital experience and normally you only know that from different right so that there are like some digital stuff in an offline experience space or you have some kind of uh, kind of um 
uh, installations which are uh, which are trying to give a digital experience. But here we have it a little bit uh, different. And I think, I mean, it took me a pretty long time to really understand what's happening here. But when I understood it, I think that was a really, really nice aha moment. <laughs> yeah, true. So what do you think about the sub pages and about this, 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 this background information? Is this, is this implementation the right way? Do we have the right balance in experience and information? What do you think? It's something, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's needed, I guess. Uh, because obviously if you work in a 3D scene, you need to do something to, you know, show details. Hmm. Um, so probably it's one of the way, maybe an underlay, maybe an overlay like this. Uh, probably I will put like more bit of effort inside the design of it. Seems a little bit, you know, static. Uh, so if we need to like balance, you know, the rest of their direction with this and maybe a person don't know anything about the sites and you show the two things. So the 3D stuff and this should say, maybe it's not from the same agency. Um, it, it is something, mm -hmm. what I say, uh, yeah, probably, probably, but again, as Rafael mentioned before, probably is also about, you know, specs limitation about the project brief, uh, about, you know, the client's vision could, could be everything. So, um, uh, maybe, um, uh, you know, everyone could do, could do better every time, but it also depends on uh, the limits you have in terms of project. Yeah, one interesting thing that could be a, a solution for that would be bringing some element from the 3D scene to these pages. So it mm -hmm. ties back to the scene a little bit because um, pretty much all the, uh, the pieces of content, they have the same style. So it's the same background color, solid color, and then the the content so mm -hmm. maybe bringing some of those elements on this scene they there are some some uh, like hand drawn illustrations maybe they could be present here somehow um just for you to um just to, to reference that you are still in that uh that world so you didn't leave that completely sure yeah, I mean, it would be also a nice opportunity to combine this paper cut feeling with the actual 3D experience in these rooms um, to have like this this combining combining um, yeah, a way to combine these both worlds because I still feel a little bit that the intro video is disconnected from all the other uh, uh, experience uh, from the from the other experience and uh, and um, it could it could help to be be. A little bit of 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 yeah an advancement but what we are talking about here we are talking about details uh this this website is 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 uh side of the day uh and um one of the best experience we have seen for for a long time um and uh, that's 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 a real beauty yeah so totally totally um yeah also you know the page transition here it's uh it's something amazing uh it's like a gate of like an elevator that closing it's pure genius um yeah uh it's a true level of depth probably they use like an easing that uh it's an out expo or maybe uh, an easing in out expo uh that that slide to the left uh or, or right based on you know an opening closing uh, depends on you know if you close the page or you open the word. Um, this is something that I love about the Woos website. For example, the page transition. Um, in some way, I don't know, reminds me like you know, as in the intro animation, like Wes Anderson here's reminds me uh, Inception by Christopher Nolan. <laughs> um, you know, the the scene that he goes down and find the the, the wife on the limbo. Um, if you a moment realized to look at the site from a different perspective, maybe let's say from the above, uh, it seems like, you know, the elevators brings to you up and down inside the different words of the designers that pay homage to Bob in, uh, in these projects. Um, honestly, maybe uh, in terms of user experience, um, I will have created maybe a word opening animation that pushed the elevator upwards or downwards um, that to open horizontally than the word. Uh, I think it. I think it uh, will be much more immersive than this. Uh, they they did a great job. So uh, probably instead of you know of of this kind of effect, maybe you can have like an effect that 
brings to you like upwards uh, very fast and then you go inside the world. So, uh, but I, I think there is a reason why you didn't do that. Absolutely. Rafael, your, your, your statement. <laughs> uh, no, one, uh, just one little thing about uh, the, the floor uh, number three, I think, uh, the, the, just the one that we, um, we were. Um, I think uh, there's, there's one really cool about that one. Um, if you can go back to the number three, sure. Um, um, I thought it was really uh, interesting that that's the only one that has a door. So, if you yeah, let's, let's go inside. So yeah, if you rotate and look back, <laughs> there's a door. You know? Wow! No, I didn't see this. So Great. yeah, that's the, that's the only one that um, that has this door, and I think that's a really really cool element that it's missing on on the other pages on the other floors, um, because you feel like okay, I'm I just entered this this uh, place, you know, this room. No, um, this is crazy. So I, mean, I think the 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 elevator door could be an element present present on all, on every um, every floor. And then the door could change to something else. For example, this one is just a regular door, but I know and the other one could be a floating door. You know that that with the garden, Absolutely, we don't really yeah. see the walls. It's just just one like door. Um, maybe the elevator door could be uh, another one. Um, but I think this is this is cool, right? Because when you look back, you, you just feel like okay, I'm I'm now in this world. If I want to go back, I click that door. Absolutely, absolutely. That's right. That's what right. a nice, what a nice notice at the end of our review. <laughs> since the questions are already in place, uh, thank you very much, Rafael. Thank you very much, Nicolo. I could yes. talk for hours with it for about all these rooms and all these details. And thank you for this little piece of detail at the end, which makes us all smile. And I guess also the designers and all the the awards uh, community. So. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to pass over to Rachel with a couple of questions uh, for us, right? Hello. Thank Hi, you, guys. That was really lovely. Um, Want to give a big shout out to the Monogrid guys, um, Valentina, Francesco, David, and Marco. They've been giving us feedback. And uh, oh, Marco said, I'm taking note of all the feedback. So it is all being very much appreciated on the team. Fantastic. Um, yeah, a few comments. Uh, Sophia Papadopoulou says, there's definitely a change in aesthetics towards a more digital quirky 3D style that will be the new normal in a few years. And uh, yeah, people are agreeing with you about, um, yeah, animation will elevate this even more. Yeah, I mean, I mean, th these these kind of experiences were were popping up. Like, I mean, it's a very clever way to have like this uh, this three hundred and sixty degree sphere um, combined with static pictures and adding a couple of three D elements to that because this is kind of the right balance to also make it accessible and not too 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 load heavy. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, this uh, the experience we just saw is even. Is even better on the mobile phone, but on the other hand side, we all know that that <clears throat> that things are can get pretty heavy there too, and so this kind of combination, uh, also in in like this technical combination, also with this um, this kind of style, Sophia just just shared, is definitely popping up everywhere and and a clever clever way of creating experiences which are not too heavy, but still very enjoyable. Um, and I think that um, exploring this way to, to, to create this experience is a clever way. Totally, totally. Yeah, and I think, I think uh, it's, uh, we know, uh, like working in, the, in, the, in this industry, we know how hard it is to um, come up with, with, a, with an idea like that, how hard it is to sell in, and, and I don't know uh, about their, um, their timing on, on, on this, but... Um, yeah, the work is really, really well executed, um, full of 3D, which is time consuming, uh, the, you know, creating all these worlds, creating all this like concept behind, um, not a, not an easy, uh, task for sure. So, uh, yeah, 
congrats to Monograde too for, for this, yeah. this one. Yeah. They did uh, the great job, great job for sure. Okay, so questions. Um, there was a feeling of snow navigation, slow navigation through the site. At what stage of a 3D experience like this do you usually decide the user flows? Hmm. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of, to discuss about this. Um, mm -hmm. Generally, like um, different, you know, current thoughts on, on this. It's something that, for example, we discuss with um, an AROC of Odorodorio. Uh, and the design. Hi, Tonea. I know. Ciao. <laughs> and uh, the design specs in the project brief uh, are some are sometimes they're script restrictive, as we mentioned before with Rafael and Jonas. Uh, and that's why the concept development phase for me uh, is where the code the code becomes user experience issues um, or a solution maybe. And for example, how I try to get you know. Um, the users from a point one to a point two while maintaining the good creativity or uh, what technology should I use to, um, you know, uh, to not have like slowdowns issues that bore users. So honestly, the first time I entered, uh, for example, on Vogue on, on Life, I had try our time like to try to navigate through the various design words. Um, you have to exit and then you need to click on new project or need to click on, you know, the five that it's the Roman number to go to go back. Uh, honestly, I will have included probably a fixed menu inside the project. So the users have like, you know, a timeline navigation that in, from inside the project, you can easily navigate through them. So probably, yeah, that, that, that's, that's the answer probably. <laughs> the only one. <laughs> yeah. No, but but uh, one comment to that. I think I think I mean at the end what we explored is basically a content hub. Yeah, we saw different content. It's it's a content hub, and you could also have like listed overviews and have it easier to accessible. And I think that on my feedback list, which we didn't go through, uh, that would be also one thing. Is what if what if I can? How can I? access content in a faster way yeah uh, i mean now i really need to search and explore that's completely fine that's the purpose of this digital event yeah you're coming inside and you get excited and you get entertained and things like that but sometimes you want to access something something quicker so some kind of underlying i don't know i don't want to call like sitemap old school sitemap or some kind of breadcrumb navigation or something something hidden which helps you to access this 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 um pieces in a in a in a faster way helps of course for people who want to yeah get to somewhere very specifically and 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 get to a piece of comment of the artist or whatever in a faster way so uh i agree that um it was a little bit slow at the one or the other side but i also think that this was on purpose um so uh, there's always something to improve, and that's why we are here and talking about that. Who cares? The size it's great. That's true. <laughs> it's great. And it's an experience. So probably Vogue also wanted this for sure for, for me. Yeah. It's it's something that that kind of client asks. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then going back to what I was saying about animations and 3D stuff, I mean, would be great to have that animation, but can you imagine um eight to nine scenes all in 3d the loading time would be crazy right like yes. if it's if it, it is already a heavy website because all the images are yeah. like super high res but if 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 we had 3d animations webgl stuff moving around there you know um the loading time would be insane and um it's a website made for general audience and then not only for uh us in the industry right so sure. we have that's something to consider as well sure okay thank you um next question from a concept development standpoint would there be anything that could be improved in the overall experience uh well honestly yeah uh the the, the build variations could be like endless so um like I think at every problem there is like a solution for sure, uh, but even a website can be improved. So I, I think again, also here the concept development phase it's uh, one of the main key values. So 
uh, in that phase, you can like experiment with, you know, freelancers, with uh, your agency team, um, you know, all the phases that concern the UX. Um, um, and honestly, they are like virtual experiments that allow you to like understand many things. And I think, and I think that this is like an experiment that uh, for Monogrid, for ourselves as judges, uh, helps a lot because we are in certain ways fortunate. Um, because behind this side, there, there are a lot to learn. Uh, there are a lot of, to discover all the hidden spots, the gems, um, to grow ourselves, to grow with the industry. It's something, uh, the content is great for sure on the site, uh, the copywriting too. And again, uh, the content is keen and the format is green. So, yeah. What I would like to comment on that, and Nicolo, as always, you're very right. Um, uh, I think we only saw the desktop experience and the mobile experience is pretty neat too, but it's a very one, one by one interpretation. And I think that especially with the possibilities with, with your mobile phone, and I guess that when I think of uh, fashion and, and things like that, there are, there's a lot of smartphone usage um i think that there's that that could do even something something special something one more thing somehow uh you uh, in in this in this context because you have like this swipe uh, possibility mm -hmm. uh even if it's just like the, uh, the 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 how it's called geo geo you know what i mean uh but you need to to pinch and slide on the smartphone so that would be at one point to maybe see how you could improve not improve i mean it's a great but add a special thing for this for this audience on on the smartphone totally totally agree what do you think Preston? yeah no yeah you guys said <laughs> said it already yeah that yeah those are those are the things and uh yeah um, um i i would uh, i would add some some um just some sounds 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 i think i'm, I'm i missed uh some ambience some like um just just to make it make every um uh room more immersive i would love to hear some sounds and if you don't like sounds you just turn it off but <laughs> if you if you if you're in um you know if you have them would be uh would be a great add to the um uh, to the experience yeah you know also on this there are a lot of you know current out different current out because you know, someone someone think that audio is good on, on sites, other ones it's not. Probably it depends on the content. And I agree with you, Rafael, that in this kind of site, you know, the background musics, the audio, maybe an interactive, you know, things, uh, you know, can you know can create that feeling that um, yeah. looks the, the overall experience will look even, amazing. Even even in the elevator, right? Because elevator yes yes the the elevator, you have like the sound of when you press the button then yeah, yeah it would be cool great idea. Some, some like i don't know classic italian music in the elevator so brings you yeah. to italy you know <laughs> brings you to like yeah right 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 totally. okay um a question from monish uh, to know about the rooms, we have to click audio. Would it be better if there was a description to all the room pages? Mm, I think I think there it is a little bit of a of a break in the overall concept, as Raphael already mentioned, that we are all the time we are not confronted with audio, and then there's the only almost only way to get some background information, then you're introduced to audio. So it's a little bit unexpected and not a complete natural flow. But what you can see is the background information, I guess, uh, is except of the of the uh, inspirational garden. Um, this wasn't connected to a specific artist, but all the other pages were connected with the artist on the bottom right bottom. And um, there was, I think, uh, their explanation of their interpretation and what they wanted to achieve. And uh, again, it's a little bit hidden and it's a little bit of a break uh, since we don't have this audio access point before. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's also on purpose getting it to the back so that the experience is first. And at the end, it's about 
an art project about talking about working environment and design and interior and art and so so on and so forth. So um, probably they, as in a gallery, uh, you first uh, ex uh, see what's happening and maybe you get some background information. I'm a person, I always love background information. So that's why, that's why I was mentioning it. it's a little bit hidden, but uh, everybody is different, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, and a, a last question from Bukalai Keria. Um, they're asking, which one is your favorite room and why? Uh, I think my favorite one is the, the, the third floor, the, the last one that I mentioned, um, because it has the, the, that, that, that door. Um, and also, it's pretty funny because there's no sky. There's just, uh, actually, there's no um, uh, roof. It's just you see the sky. Um, and uh, I love the colors. I love the art direction on, on that one. Um, so, yeah, that's my favorite. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you waiting for me? I'm waiting for you. Yeah. Uh, boy, I really can't answer that. I think I think every every room has something special. Every room, I think there's still some interconnecting design directions, trends, like with these some kind of very very like this these colors or this Art Deco heroic church like monuments uh, almost and. Uh, playing with this a little bit cheap 3D stuff, like this little bit new brutalism style, you know, like it's a little bit cheap, uh, like in the in the 90s and things like that. So they're all different styles and 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 trends coming together. And I think the way how they interpret it and and make it accessible is is already good enough. So I don't have a favorite a favorite room. I just like the whole experience. Yeah, you stole my answer. <laughs> but no, no, actually, um, um, which yeah, is a very no, smart answer. Yeah, you stole my no, actually, um, yeah, uh, I, I think like Kiona. So it, it's not about you know the the the, the room, I guess. Uh, probably the inspirational gallery is the main one because they want they if you if you look at that room, you understand probably you know the the feeling behind. The brand behind the concept, the project, uh, but I think that every room works together alongside another. Uh, it, it's something like a world of the old designers of Vogue, and they just want to split up with different kind of creatives based on the designer works. Um, you know the the world, so it's. Uh, it's it's more about I guess the the overall experience that Sion's mentioned, um, and I and I think Monogrid probably think the same. Shout outs to Florence to Monogrid. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Perfect, Rachel, you're muted. So. Maybe maybe your microphone's off. I don't know. Yeah, no, my my mouse is not working. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, okay, thank you. Was, my mouse has stopped a... working, so I uh, here we go. My mouse stopped working. Thank you for saving me. Um, yes, yeah, so I couldn't unmute myself, but yeah, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you to Monogrid. Thank you to everyone for putting all your questions and comments in the chat, and. Um, yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this, you should see our last live uh, show of the season. That's next Thursday at 5 p.m. And that is creating people-centered AI experiences with Google's People and AI Guidebook with Gabe mm. Clapper. So, yeah, join us if you're interested in AI. That sounds um, good. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's all we've got time for today. Uh, thank you so much, Jonas, Raphael, and Nicolo. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, guys. It's um, so fun. So fun as always. And um, yeah, thank you, Jonas. Thank you, too. Thank you to the community. Looking forward to one of the next sessions coming up. When, Rachel? <laughs> the uh, Next week on the 17th. Perfect. <laughs> so thank you very much. And uh, it was a pleasure, Rafael, Nicolo. Thanks, Rachel. It was a pleasure. Um, perfect.
Okay, yeah, we'll see you uh, next week on Awards Academy. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Rachel. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.